This week, I would like to utilize stencils in the creation of a cyanotype. And as you well know, cyanotypes require sunlight. So I'm showing you what the sky looks like today in North Georgia, or the day that I am choosing to do these cyanotypes. And it's a bit cloudy, but I'm going to try anyway. So come on over with me to my studio nestled behind that peach tree, and we will get started on this coffee cup prompt. Stencils is what I pulled for this month. And last week I made stencils utilizing a glue gun. In the upcoming weeks, I would like to support the women that have supported me in my Facebook group. And they each have made stencils that are for sale. They've designed and created stencils that are for sale over on PM Artist Studio. So I have placed an order for their stencils to support the artists that have supported me by subscribing to my channel and participating in my Facebook group. So I hope you will join me. And as you may have noticed before, there is a discount for any order over $35 by utilizing PegFan10. You will find the playlist for all of my coffee cup prompts for the past five months on the end screen. My name is Peggy. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. So let's get started on the cyanotypes. When utilizing chemicals, I always recommend that you put on gloves. We're using two chemicals, uh, potassium ferrocyanide and ferric ammonium citrate. The mixture of these two creates the solution for the creation of the cyanotype. I'm mixing one capful of what they call solution A and one capful of what is called solution B. The link to purchase these chemicals is in the description below. And that is a link to my Amazon store. I do make a tiny commission off of anything purchased through that Amazon store. I always appreciate that. That's always a nice little surprise. And I do appreciate you using those links. I have cut a bunch of watercolor paper. And I will be utilizing every piece that I can get coated. While I've only utilized two capfuls, you can see it creates quite a bit and goes quite a long way. I'm coating the full piece of paper. Now, there is another very interesting way to do cyanotypes, and that is just making brush marks on the page and exposing so that you have the brush marks in that real beautiful cyan blue. I'm coating the full sheets this time. And I am going to coat until I'm out of the solution. It's interesting, two capfuls, how much it will actually coat. The bottle says that it is good for 65 cyanotypes, but Personally, I think they're talking about 65 8x10s or 65 11x14s because I've gotten a lot of sheets of paper coated with two capfuls. This is the last sheet that I'm going to coat. And I left this footage in because I thought that it was important to show you how far just a little bit of the solution goes. You'll see over there on my right a ATC stencil. This is an ATC ATC stencil created by Patricia and Mariah, I believe when they first started making stencils. What you see me doing now is placing the sheets that I am not planning on using into this bag to protect it from the light. I'm tightening up the top of the bag and putting this in a dark place in my studio. In my humble opinion, it would have been better to put that in a black garbage bag, but I don't have one in the studio, so I'm utilizing what I have on hand. Now I'm getting this ready to print. So I shall place the stencil on the paper, a piece of glass on top of the stencil and paper, and I went to back that with a little sheet of cardboard. 
there are two things that you can do here. You can do as I'm doing, which this doesn't work as well as it could, and I'll show you why later. Or you could actually put it down in the frame that that glass came in. I've been utilizing this glass for dendritic, uh, dendritic printing um, and all sorts of other things. So the frame, I'm not exactly sure where that's taken off to. So I'm just clamping it together, thinking that I have a very tight connection there. And what is important is that tight connection. We're heading out into this cloudy, overcast day. There you can see my little, my little studio and take a look at the clouds in the sky. I've set this between my basil and my sage in my little herb spot there at the end of my deck. And I let it sit for 45 minutes. I have brought it back in. I have two pans full of water. The pan on the left is just plain water and I'm putting a splash of peroxide in the pan on the right. The first thing I'm going to do, and you can see how it kind of turned brown, and you can see my bleed through here, um, which is fine. It, it turns out looking just fine. And I'm really surprised at the print that I get on this cloudy day. So I rinsed it first in the clear water, and now I'm putting it in the peroxide, which is really going to pop that color. And you can see how vibrant that blue became with the peroxide solution. And I'm pointing out here the just the bleed through. That's where that stencil wasn't firmly connected to the sheet of coated paper. But I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm not unhappy with the way it looks, and I think it's going to look pretty good for what I want to use this for. My intentions with this cyanotype is to take it to my encaustic wax station. I want to have a small cyanotype that I can embed in wax on a cradle board. I'm pulling, now that it's dry just a little bit, I'm going to pull off these blue edges. I was watching a um, Christy Hartman video the other day. And she was talking about her feature stripe. And as I pull this off, I think this would make a pretty good little feature stripe on a collage. So I'll set those aside and take Christy's advice a little bit later. This is what we ended up with is the cyanotype print. I want to put, start my encaustic piece with this cradle board, this piece of Kozo paper, and we'll position this um, stencil. Uh, cyanotype, cyanotype created with a stencil on top of that. I also, now that I've found out that I can get a print on a cloudy day, I have a couple more stencils that I am going to take out and put in that sunlight for this afternoon. And I'll show you what those look like later as well. When I show you the cyanotype piece I finish, this is what we're working with. And this is what we received from all the layers of encaustic wax. I've used uh, plastered lace in this thread, some book paper, my cyanotype print. I've created some marks with chains on within my wax. I've utilized pen pastels, uh, indigo blue wax. There's just a lot of things going on in this particular piece and that will be posted later this week so thank you so much i hope you will hop over to pm artist studio and support some of these women as you see the stencils that i utilize i will likely go more than four weeks with this clue to get through the uh, number of artists that actually participate on my channel so all the prompts from the previous five months are right here. Bye for now.